Have you ever wondered if the person that you're talking to is even a qualified buyer? Like, have you ever wondered how to figure out, hey, is this person even gonna buy insurance? Well, I used to struggle with that too, but what I'm gonna go over with you here today is exactly how I've learned with pretty good accuracy of how to figure out if, uh, if someone's even gonna buy insurance, if they're even worth continuing on to, if they're even worth giving a full presentation to, because I listen to a lot of insurance agents phone calls every single week, and one of the biggest things I hear is people presenting for an hour, 40 minutes to an hour to someone who I just know is not going to buy insurance. So what we're gonna do is jump into what a qualified buyer actually is, first off. Now, first off, a qualified buyer is someone who has a problem that they want to solve right now. Now, a problem is only a problem if there's an emotion attached to it, right? So think about this. Someone can uh, not care about body odor, so they don't care if they stink, and that will mean that deodorant is not a problem for them. Someone will only buy deodorant if they care about how they smell. Trust me, go to any LA Fitness in Miami, there's plenty of people who don't care about how they smell. So you can't sell deodorant to someone who doesn't care how they smell. Just like you can't sell final expense life insurance to someone who doesn't care about not leaving any money behind to their loved ones when they pass. There are a series of questions that you can bring people to through to figure out, hey, is this person even qualified to buy? Is this something that this person may even be interested in doing? So I'm gonna go over the reasons why people will buy insurance and how we find those reasons, how we pull those out of people so that they can tell us why they want insurance instead of us telling them why they should get it. And then I'm gonna go over some scenarios where you may be talking to someone and, and it's just a dead giveaway that they aren't gonna buy and there's a very tough chance they're gonna buy. My main recommendation though is to not actually give anybody quotes until they can tell you exactly what this insurance is going to be for. So we're gonna go through the first scenario here if someone doesn't have any insurance. So if someone doesn't have any insurance, then you, can, you wanna ask them, all right, and are you okay with that? So as you're going through your script, there's probably a part on your script where you ask someone if they have any existing insurance coverage. I ask people, you can email me at jbe at thejbe.com for my script. My email is also gonna be in the description. You wanna check out the description. You also wanna to subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications and give me a thumbs up if you find value in my content because you're valuable to me and I appreciate the support. So if someone tells you that they don't have insurance, so I don't have insurance, and you ask them, okay, are you okay with that? We're, and if they say no, most people are gonna say no, we're gonna play that route first, right? No, I'm not. You ask them why not? So they tell you why they're not okay with it. When they tell you why they're not okay with it, that's gonna bring the problem up about why they want the insurance in the first place. So someone, you say, why not? Someone says, well, because when I die, my kids are gonna have this financial burden to pay. You say, okay, well, how, do, how does that make you feel? How, how do you feel about that? So when you, you have to make sure you ask it in the right tone because you could offend someone. You don't want to be like, how does that make you feel, right? Say, so how do you feel about that? When they tell you that their kids are going to have to pay for it and they'll tell you, I don't feel too good. I'm pretty concerned. So what they've just told you is that they don't have any insurance right now. Their kids are going to have to pay for it when they die and they're pretty concerned about their kids having to come out of pocket for this. Next, you want to ask them why they haven't taken care of it yet since they're concerned about it. They're gonna tell you. Maybe you can ask them, maybe was it a financial thing? Did you not think you could qualify? Did maybe you have something before? Or were you like most people and just put it off? Now, once they tell you that, you wanna ask them if they've, if they've been looking for something like this. So hey, before we're speaking here, before you request this information, did you were you out looking for something? How, how long have you been looking to get something in place? And you wanna dig into maybe if they've looked at other things, because you wanna figure out maybe what companies they've looked at. So you can kinda maybe help them uh, more, or they're gonna say that I haven't done anything, all right? And then you wanna ask them, how would it change your situation, your family situation, if you were able to get this taken care of, if you were able to actually do this and get something taken care of for them? And they would tell you how it would change the situation. You say, okay, how, how would it make you feel being able to do that? And they're gonna tell you how they would feel about being able to solve their problem. So they told you the problem, why they don't like it, and what's gonna happen, then they tell you the solution, why they like it, and why they would wanna do it, Okay, this is the ideal scenario. Not every scenario is gonna go like this. I know that. I know everybody, some people in the audience are already saying, well, what if they say this, what if they say that? I'm gonna be getting to it, and if I don't get to it, drop it in the comments and I'm gonna cover it for you. So say, what would it be like for you to handle this? And then you say, hey, now let me ask you, if, if say you passed away and you didn't have anything, say you died tomorrow, Betty, what would Johnny do for the money when he goes to the funeral home? If he goes to the funeral home and the funeral director says, hey, how are you paying for this? Where's he gonna get the money if you don't have something in place? They're probably gonna say, well, I don't know. Then you say, well, 
how important is it for you to make sure that this gets taken care of? So we found the problem. Now we're trying to find the if they are they looking to take care of it. How important is it for you to start getting this take to start make, making sure that something's in place so that this can be taken care of? At this point, if you follow it properly, and in this is the ideal scenario, they're going to be saying, "Yeah, it's pretty important." Say, "Okay, great. Well, based this next word track based on how you told me that." Your family is going to have a financial burden if you pass, and because it doesn't make you feel that great, you're pretty concerned about that having coming up. Then you say, "Okay, well, I think I may have a program that's a perfect fit for you, but not everyone qualifies. Is it okay if I ask you some questions to see if I can even help you? Because I can't help everybody." And hopefully they say yes, and then you keep going and you go through the rest of your script. You ask them your health questions. You qualify them to see if they actually can qualify for a plan. You see, qualified for a life insurance policy doesn't mean that they're qualified to actually buy insurance in their head. That's the ideal scenario. It's ideal, but it doesn't happen all the time. But people don't, people don't have insurance, and they're looking to solve the problem. Next, you're going to have people who say that they already have a policy. So if it's a brand new lead. You want to ask him, okay? Well, when you originally requested this information, or when you requested this information, were you looking to maybe add insurance or save money on what you have now? You can ask that. You can also ask how much do you have, right? This is this is a good question. You can ask these ahead of, beforehand if you want. How much do you have? Why did you pick that much? So they're going to tell you how much insurance they have, and then you want to ask them why they picked that much. If they have a ten thousand dollar policy. You want them to tell you exactly what it is, because when they tell you why they picked that much, you're going to want to start thinking in your head. Are they short on insurance? Are there areas where they can add because they're they're not fully covered? You want to ask them what company they have, why they chose that company, what they like about their current plan. You want to ask them how long they've had it, right? Because if they say that they want to save money, but they've had a whole life policy for ten years, clearly you're not going to be able to replace that policy. And、uh, you want to ask if it's term or whole life. I also encourage you to do policy reviews with their carrier. It's really easy. You just get their carrier on a three way phone call. And the carrier will go over with you what they have for a policy. So if they have insurance, there are things you're going to want to look for to add additional coverage. All right. So one reason that people will add additional coverage is, like I said, there's a gap in what they want it to cover and what they have. So make sure that when people tell you how much they have, that you're taking inflation into account. For instance, a cost of a funeral will probably double in 25 years. So if they're like, yeah, I have fifteen thousand dollars to cover my funeral, but they're in their 60s and they're healthy. Then ask them, hey, how much longer? The important thing is here: try to not tell people things. Try to do your best to ask them things whenever you can. Meaning, instead of saying, "Well, you know, a funeral will double in 25 years," right? Say, "Hey, do you feel like you'll live another 25? You're pretty healthy. You feel like you'll probably live another 25 years, right?" Say, "Yes." Okay, cool. The, just like the price of everything's go up, goes up. Is it fair to say that the price of a funeral will go up too? Do you think? Yeah, logically. Okay. Now, based on current inflation rates, the price of a funeral will double actually in about twenty to twenty-five years. So you have fifteen thousand now. What about in twenty twenty-five years when you're probably going to pass? What are your family? What will your family do for the difference there? So you want to try to pull out those scenarios with those shortages of coverage. Also, say someone has plenty of coverage to cover their final expenses and, and their burial and everything from now into the future. You want to ask someone. There are there are other reasons why people would get additional coverage. Number one, they would want to leave money behind to a child or a grandchild as a gift. Another reason is they'd want to have money to protect their house and in, in and protect their mortgage. So. Say someone passes and then they leave their house to a loved one. What'll happen is that person's going to inherit the bills. We sold a couple policies last week asking people this. So I'm like, okay, you got all your final expenses taken care of. That's absolutely amazing. Now, is someone inheriting your house? Do you own your house? Yes. Is someone inheriting it? Yes. Are they going to inherit the bills for that house too? What do you mean? Well, you have property taxes, right? Yes. Okay. And you have bills every month. Yes. Okay. So when your kids get that house, they're going. Are they going to be paying those bills? Yeah. Great. What do you have in place to make sure that those bills can be paid paid for them? And now they they could say, well, they're just going to sell it.、Right? If they say they don't have anything in place, then you can say,、oh, are you okay with that? It's going to be a, a liability to them. You think they'll actually want to keep the house? And if they say, well, they're just going to want to sell it anyway, you say, okay, cool. But what are they going to do while they're waiting for it to be sold? We just went through like one of the hottest real estate markets ever. It's not going to be like that forever. If the end, if they pass, and they, if you pass, and they inherit a liability instead of an asset, they're more likely to want to sell that house at a discount and liquidate it at a discount than hang on and get as much as they can for it. Right? If it's worth a hundred thousand, they're going to sell it for seventy just to get rid of it 
because they don't want to have to handle the bills every month. So that's a reason why someone can add coverage. Another reason is if a husband and wife are together and say they both receive Social Security, when one of them passes, the other person doesn't receive both of their Social Security income. So they're going to be left with less income. So you could say, hey, well, when you pass, what do you have in place to make sure that this income can be continued on? Right before you want to say, okay, well, when you pass, is there anybody who relies on your income who would be hurt from that loss of income after you pass? Yes, well, this person, and then you want to go down that route of figuring out, hey, how much will be need, to, how much will they be relying on every month? What will they do if they don't have? Once that money stops, what, how will their lifestyle change? Are you okay with that? Would you want to maybe make sure that something could happen? What would happen if you don't leave anything in place? Like, how, how do you feel? How, how would you feel about that if they had to go through that hardship? So we're trying to pull the problem out. As you can see here, I don't like to move on until I can figure out what they're going to use the insurance for. So you want to dig in, all right? And if someone says they have money saved up, it's another scenario that we'll run into. Someone says that they have money saved up uh, to cover everything. So this is valid if they have like millions of dollars. But if they don't, then their money will probably go towards long-term care. So if you go to New York Life, Google New York Life Long-Term Care Calculator, New York Life Insurance Company has an awesome long-term care calculator. It'll help you bring up the rates for long-term care in their state. Medicare does not cover long-term care. Medicare will cover a nursing home for like 60 days, I think. Don't quote me on this, but I think it's 60 days if you go to a nursing home for what you went to a hospital for. So like you have to go there directly from a hospital and you have to be going to the nursing home for what the hospital treated you for and it's only for 60 days that it's covered in order for medicaid to kick in that client has to have less than two thousand dollars to their name i think in florida it's two grand but other states it's different before the state pays for it but it's usually around just a couple thousand dollars as the threshold before the state will pay for that so if they have one hundred and fifty thousand dollars saved up that money's going to be gone pretty quick a nursing home, as you'll see on that website, is like eight to fourteen thousand dollars a month. A, a nurse, a visiting nurse, is super expensive. Home health care is expensive. A, a, a health aid is expensive. Assisted living is expensive. So, if someone's like, "I got money saved up," great. Well, do you know how much it costs for long term care? Do you have long term care insurance? Okay. Do you know how much a nursing home costs? Okay. Cool. What's well, about ten thousand dollars a month? Do you have enough money in savings to pay for that for a few years if you have to go to a nursing home? You ever known someone who went to a nursing home? Was it tough on the family? So you want to ask these questions to pull that stuff out of people. And then people may realize like, hey, you know what? Maybe my savings isn't like the best idea. I'm also open. If you guys have any other ideas or anything you say that's successful, please drop it in the chat here. And uh, I, would love to, I would love to learn about it. I actually got these. I got my dog some new treats, some Omega salmon oil chews. Uh, they're actually pretty tasty. Um, I'm just kidding. I haven't had any yet. Not that crazy. Uh, I am crazy enough to sell insurance though. So another one you may hear is I'm leaving my body to science. Okay, you're leaving your body to science. That's great. Actually, they don't always accept the body. So you want to tell people, hey, do you, do you have a backup plan for that? But people are usually pretty stubborn with that. And, and you know, they, they don't like to hear that they, their body won't be taken. They think it's already taken care of. That's fine and dandy. But you can bring up the fact that someone may be inheriting bills. They, someone may need their income when they pass. They may want to leave some extra money behind just in case. And you want to ask them questions about leaving maybe a gift to their children or grandchildren or something like that. All right. So there are some people. That, so I just went over some examples of why people would buy insurance. They don't have any and they want to make sure it's getting in place because they have a problem that needs to be taken care of. If they have insurance, you want to try to figure out are there any gaps in coverage between what they have and what they want it to cover long into the future. Or are there any other things they have to take care of that they didn't even think of, like an income replacement or covering mortgage and bills and stuff like that? And if, if people have money saved up, the same thing. Now, there are some people who just don't care. You're going to hear it in their tone. So as you're going through your presentation, if you can't get someone to tell you why they want insurance and what it's going to do for them, then the chances of them buying are slim. It's very, very low percent that I get someone through a presentation and I can't figure out what they would use this for that they end up buying. Just it rarely, rarely happens. I know in my head as I'm talking to these people and I hear agents do this on the phone all the time. They'll be talking to people and trying to qualify and they'll go and quote. I'm like, yo, this person didn't even tell you what they need the insurance for. They, they couldn't think of a reason to buy it so they don't buy it. Some people have plenty of money saved up and they're not going to buy insurance. Other people just don't care. So if you're talking to someone and they just don't care like the issues that their family will run into financially to cover these things when they pass then you're not going to sell them insurance, right? They have to have an emotional attachment to the problem or it's not really a problem that they want to solve. It's not a problem to them. 
Some people uh, actually ended up in your sales funnel accidentally and they shouldn't even have been there in the first place. So not every lead you talk to is gonna be someone who like, is like ready to buy. I'd say if you get five lead, 10 leads, right? Two or three are like lay downs. If you got talked to anybody on the phone, let's say two are lay downs, two or three are gonna be sold with follow-up. A couple ended up in there accidentally. A couple will never buy insurance ever. And then the other remaining ones are kind of up in the air of the other groups that they'd go to. So you're not gonna sell every lead that you talk to, obviously. But this will help you figure out, hey, are you gonna waste an hour talking with someone who has who can't tell you why they want the insurance? I had someone the other day, lady had a ton of money. And, and it, we got down to it, she had a bunch of life insurance. She had her burial paid for. She had a bunch of money saved up. She was 83, the policy, she got her policies years ago. These ones, new ones would be really a lot more pricey than the one she had now. And I'm like, ma'am, I, I don't really think there's anything I can help you out with. She's like, I don't think so either. I was like, okay, and it was a telemarketing lead. I said, hey, so why, why did you, or a live transfer? I was like, so why did you initially stay on the phone and talk to the person about the, about the coverage? She's like, well, they seem pretty nice and I didn't want to be rude and hang up. <laughs> I was like, okay. So that you're not going to sell everybody, you're going to you're going to start to hear it. You're going to start to hear the tone in people's voice when they are just totally disengaged and not interested. And if you can't pull them into giving you a reason why they want it, okay? This, along with everything else that we talk about in my channel about overcoming objections and evalu evaluating, hey, can this person make a decision on their own, right? If it's a one legger, they don't make the decisions themselves. It doesn't really matter how urgent it is to them, then they can't pull the trigger on it. If they don't have the money, they can't afford it. There are people, we talked to someone yesterday, makes $500 a month. They, they're like negative, their bank's negative every month. I'm not gonna sell them a policy. I'm not looking for that chargeback, right? So there's some people who aren't qualified. They don't make the decision. Some people you're gonna talk to are mentally unstable and it happens. So, but what I'm trying to do here is help you evaluate it, it when you, so when you know, when you have someone who is worth that time or if it's if there's you should just move on and call the next lead. So I hope this helped you. Subscribe to the channel, turn on post notifications if you find value in this. Check out the next video coming up too. It'll help you learn about all the rebuttals that we go over in final expense telesales and how to overcome every objection that you're running into in the close. Thank you.